I really feel from the Lord right now that there are people watching that probably see the title and want to click away, but I really feel from the Lord that this message is for you. Don't click away at all. God is about to do something in your life. Stay tuned. But the only thing I heard in churches were you're going to hell in a handbasket. You know, we love the prostitute, we love the drug addicts, we love the liar and the sinner, but when it came to homosexuality, it was like, you know, the worst of the worst. I was struggling, I was struggling. I was just, I was getting ready to give up on God, on everything, and I'd see these two guys, and they're just like, hey, we haven't seen you in a year, where have you been? And, and in that, they were just like, hey, well, we're going to Pulse. Do you want to go? And in my mind, I was just like, ah, uh, I was like, okay. I told him I'd go. Um, I remember, yeah, let's call for alcohol. And I remember I looked over to my friend that invited me and his boyfriend was dancing there. And I, I said, man, it sounds like firework. And at that instant, I remember that I saw the shooter right there. He was right in front of me, you know? I remember people saying, well, you were in the military. And I was like, no, you gotta understand. Like when you go out to Iraq, you're almost prepared. You got full battle. What's going on, guys? I am here with Luis Ruiz, my brother. Um, man, today's gonna be a, a powerful testimony. Amen. I want it to be real and authentic. Um, I, we were already speaking a little bit about it. I wish we would have got it on video. <laughs> but um, man, I'm just gonna let my brother um speak to you guys about where he came from, um, just the LGBTQ community, how he came out of it, military, just like I was military. Um, from Orlando, I'm from Fort Lauderdale, but I lived out here, you know, just being in the nightlife and, you know, surviving that Pulse nightclub shooting. And you guys saw the video where I was out there recently on, a, on the news channel um, and how they took out the gospel that I was trying to preach. But, you know, he, you know, the memorial that I was um, out there evangelizing by and um, my brother actually survived. My brother survived. Mm. You, su you survived mm. that Pulse nightclub shooting. So... Again, I want this to be real, not fake, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. just you to be open and, you know, just let the Holy Spirit speak through you. So go ahead, yeah, my brother. Where do you want to start? Absolutely, man. Man, it's an honor, dude. And, and yeah, uh, being in the Army together. You know, we're not together, but we were part of the Army. Well, I was in the Army. You were in the Navy. Navy, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's awesome to see another brother that defended his country and now is defending the gospel. And so I love that. Um, yeah, so I grew up in a military home too. Dad was in the army. And so I remember most of the times he was out in training a lot and I was left home with mom and sister. And so I believe that that created some type of atmosphere or environment to where I started questioning who I was at such a young age. That's why I understand when they say I was born this way, because sometimes it goes so back that you think that you were born that way. And it feels so real, you know? Um, I love it because the Lord is moving and like a lot of pastors, a lot of churches are ha now having this conversation. Um, and it's not that they don't want to. It's just honestly, they just don't know how to. And they're asking for grace. Um, and so I remember just struggling as a young kid and, and hoping and wishing that they would talk about this behind the mic. But the only thing I heard in churches were you're going to hell in a handbasket. You know, we love the prostitute, we love the drug addicts, we love the liar and the sinner, but when it came to homosexuality, it was like, you know, the worst of the worst, and there was so much shame and condemnation, and I myself um, feel that that's why I kept it so quiet and so secretive, you know. Um, I remember my dad finding pornography in on the computer, and it wasn't like heterosexual pornography, it was gay pornography, and so there was a lot of because he didn't know, and I was one, the one that was gonna carry the last name, coming from a Puerto Rican dad, you already know. And so, um, yeah, it was really tough, and now he's pastoring a church as well, so there was a lot of embarrassment and shame. You know, um, I catch myself sharing, like, my side of the story, but even in this walk and journey with the Lord, um, the Lord has actually showed me, like, his, his hurt, his pain, you know, when I came out, when I was struggling, as a dad wanting to, nurture and protect and speak identity it was so tough because later i found out my dad was um rejected my dad was abused as a kid and so because he didn't show me enough emotional affection when one man doesn't hug you another man will especially for this for for this time you know and so um in that um i got a lot of pastor i didn't get a lot of dad you know uh, growing up 
and and we talk about this now too there's been so much healing in that but i remember just going through it uh, faking girlfriends pretending i had girlfriends i mean i was prom king in my high school nobody nobody knew i kept it really under the wraps and and um and and you know i was a masculine gay i guess that's what they call it and and so for me it's different because i know a lot of people they it's it's a different story but for me at least like i like sports i like hanging out with guys i like you know the the guy guy stuff even in that the lord has taught me like what means uh what kingdom masculinity actually means man and so um and so yeah i remember joining the army because i thought that that would turn me straight you know because it's crazy because when you instruct your child in the word of God, they'll never depart from it. And so there were moments where I was growing up and I was just like, even in the struggle, I felt that I miss church. I miss worship. So I would find myself in churches trying to pray the gay way, <laughs> trying to like fit this mold of like what a man, a straight man looks like. And, and so I remember even people not knowing, you know, um, would try to marry me off to females. And it's like, wait, like, I got a lot of issues going on here, but they were wanting to address the fact that, oh, he's married, so he looks Christian now. And so um, it, they, that was, they, the fruits of the Spirit for them were more getting married than actually getting restoration and healing in my heart. And so that would cause me to run back into the LGBT, you know? So it was different ages where I would find myself going back into churches and, and um, letting them... I, I remember being surrounded by men and just... Uh, them talking about their porn addictions and them talking about like you know their struggles but when i raised up my hand and i said i have same-sex attraction bro it went from handshakes hugs barbecues come to my house come eat at my house to like we're praying for you from a far distance like if i was a plague it was tough it was tough um and so that would run so when you don't find a family in the church the church is supposed to be a family and when you don't find a family you go outside looking for a counterfeit family outside and I don't know how much you know about that LGBT family, but you have the drag queen mom, you have the drag dad, you have, it's, it's, it's a form of family. That's why they're so united. The enemy knows that there's power in unity. And so, although it might be a false unity, it's a, still a unity. And so that's why they're so loud today and they're so strong. And if the church can grab a hold of that, they'd be a force to be reckoned with. And so, um, yeah, so I would run it back into the LGBT all through my life suffering, join the army because I thought that would make me a man. But that actually made me more promiscuous because now I'm more um, exposed to men that are really in the closet. You know, men that when we would go to Iraq and Afghanistan, all of a sudden, you know, they're calling me up at midnight saying, hey, I'd rather be with a bro than cheat on my wife with another female because... That felt more good up here, you know, yeah. And so I felt like that right there, that circle, it was just, I was very sexually promiscuous. And so, um, yeah, just going through life, just doing that. I remember one time they found a letter in my pod where I was sleeping in, in Iraq and they put me in the front of formation, in the front of my company. And they were just like, this is not what we are in the military. We're not homosexuals. This guy's a queer. I mean, they went at it with me. They made me feel so much shame and condemnation. I felt like it, I became so angry and bitter that um, I started being an activist. I was like, oh, this is how I am. Take it or leave it. And it, it, my, my thought pattern shifted. And so it just drew me further away from the Lord. Um, yeah, and, and these are the same guys that would uh, call me to hook up in, at midnight but then we're in the front of formation saying we don't want him to shower with us. Even though I was a sharpshooter and, and, and shot better than them, for some reason, they didn't feel like I could like have their back anymore. And so, yeah, the enemy knew what he was doing, man. I felt so much. I was like, wow, like we went through training together. These are supposed to be my ride or dies. And, and then this happens. And so, yeah, so I became this like hardcore activist and I was just like, yeah, this is how I am. You want to kick me out of the army because I'm gay? Then go ahead. And beca because I was such a good soldier, there was grace on that. You know, I had a mom and dad that knew how to pray, you know, and they God took care of me in that situation. And so I, I still love the Lord. I just knew what the Bible said about the my lifestyle. You know, I remember telling boyfriends that really loved me and wanted to be with me that, you know, I, this is not going to last like. We can get, I don't even want to get married because I know that's a sin. Like, you know what I'm saying? There was still the fear of the Lord in me and they would hate it. They would be like, then why are you with me? Why are you wasting your time with me? And it was just like, I just didn't care. Like I was just a hoe, you know what I mean? Like I was sexually promiscuous. Could we be real, you know? So I remember, um, 
Yeah, so I'm I'm transitioning into the Army Reserves. I end up in Orlando, Florida, because Florida is my home. I love Florida. Um, I remember just being at the gay clubs, being a hot mess, because now I'm around Latinos. For years, that kept going on. Um, I was getting really popular around the scene, around Orlando, Miami. I mean, there were like Instagrams and social media sites that from uh, like rated the guys like from that they were hot, they were attractive, and I was on a lot of them. And so the enemy was like, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna keep him really involved. And then me being a military gay guy, like that was just a great picture to put on a face for advertisement, you know. Um, so long story short, I was drunk one night. I was at uh, at the clubs, uh, Parliament House, which one of them's actually, I think it's closed down now. I'm not sure, but uh, one of the biggest clubs at Florida at the time. And I remember just being so drunk, and I ended up at a house of prayer. I don't know how. I just, I was drunk one night. It was crazy. I ended up in front of a church and they were worshiping and praying. And I, I walked in and I'm like, wow, it's three in the morning and they're like worshiping. And I walk in and I sit next to a lady, an old lady, and I have, I had tattoos. So I'll, right away, my legalistic mindset was like, oh, she's going to be, she's going to talk about my tattoos and I need Jesus and all this, which I did. But, you know, um, I remember uh, in that conversation, my heart was so torn because she looked at my tattoos and she said, you have a story to tell. And I was just like, wow. And like, you know, from right then I accepted the Lord into my heart. And like for a whole year, I remember just, you know, trying to pray the gay away again, trying to like, I feel like my main mission was to become this straight Christian man. And, and there was so much going on in my heart that God was trying to heal. But I was just so focused in making that my God and my idol that I was forgetting about my actually Lord and Savior and direction from the Holy Spirit. And and like I said, I was surrounded around great men that just honestly didn't know really how to steward that and father that. And so, um, wow. yeah, and so, That's so good. it changes the dynamic of the process. You know, I, I think we were speaking um, one day about giants we're taking down giants, but we got to remember that not every giant looks the same. They act the same. You can't take them down the same. And just like a spiritual stronghold in the land, you know, there's a different type of op us coming from the military. There's a different type of op spiritual ops. And so with this, I also I remember just uh, being in my bed about to get on another uh, podcast TV show. And the Lord spoke to me, and, and I'm always asking the Lord, what are the nuggets? What, are, what do you want me to release to the listener? And I felt like he, sh he gave me a vision of a, a foreign country and a bunch of men and family members going into this country, people going into this country, and just really trying to um, order something from a restaurant or buy something. But I saw that they didn't understand the language and so they couldn't eat what wasn't on the table. They couldn't purchase the items. They couldn't navigate right. You enjoyed yourself, but there wasn't true revelation of. And so uh, God, I felt like God was uh, sharing on my heart that I'm raising up interpreters, tour guides to go in with these people while they're, you know, in these foreign lands. And that's what the LGBTQ right now is. This is a foreign land for a lot of churches and pastors, bro. And they don't understand the language. Like you. Yeah, and how to reach them. And you can't use the old glory with the new glory. This is a new season. You know what I'm saying? Like millennials and boomers can't use the same strategic stuff that we used for Gen Z. You know, they're a whole different like people group. And so um, I feel like God is raising up interpreters. I feel like God's raising up people like myself and others that have come out of the lifestyle and that are going into these churches and and partnering with these pastors to help people and so to understand to understand the country the foreign land and so even like what do you do with uh two men that are married together and they live more better than a christian and what do you do with you know two females that are married together but they raise those kids more in the word than we do in the gay christian movement that can spit more gospel than a lot of us they are more unified in the body than we are you see what I'm saying? So there has to be a new strategy for the giant in the land. You know, there has to be this love language. You know, the Lord showed me one time that we are so strong either in love and too much love could be dangerous, but too much truth can also be dangerous. And so I feel like a lot of us are going into these, the heart of the LGBT with this angry, almost homophobic language and so what it's doing, it's creating more anger than the goodness of God that leads a man to repent. But if you married that, 
with love and truth, it rejoices together. In Corinthians, it says that love rejoices in truth. And what's so beautiful about that is that in love and truth, you get Jesus that produces grace. You can't understand people through the process. You can't understand how to minister to someone in any lifestyle. Spiritual, and only he has the key to it. Yeah, yeah and so that's another. That's funny you say that because the Lord showed me um, a, 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 a man that, that prophesied into my life and said, Luis, like, I really believe that you're the key to start these cars to the ignition, you know? There's a prophetic word over the LGBTQ right now, and it's the 100,000 of Bob Jones before he passed away. He prophesied that 100,000, the first wave of revival would be 100,000. Would, there would be a mass exodus out the LGBTQ, and they would operate in signs and wonders, and that's only the first wave. But we can't partner with that prophetic word until the church understands the language of the land. You know, uh, how to steward, because what it, it's great that they all come, but what happens to the process? What happens to these uh, orphans that need fathers, that need brothers to speak identity back to them? And that's how uh, our ministry got formed, out of, out of uh, persecution, out of understanding that God gave us the keys of identity as men, as fathers. I remember just a year out, I was in, I was in the church. I was trying to do the church thing. I was getting a lot of knowledge. I wasn't getting too much revelation, but that was also in my part too. You know, there was a lot of stuff that I wasn't ready to give up, you know, so I can't point fingers um, because, you know, we are the bride of Christ and God loves his bride. And, and, you know, I get really shaken when I hear a lot of men go after the church and the church this, and the church did me this and, and, and then Jesus on the cross says, but they did the same thing to me. And I said, forgive them father for they not know. And so, um, man, and, and, and this is what they're looking for, bro. They're looking for love. That's why they, they scream out love is love so loud. Because in actuality, that's what they wanted from the church. That's what they wanted from the body of Christ. And so if we can move in unity and, and the love of Christ, a love that a man that died for us on the cross, it would change the trajectory of the, the, bright, the church. And that's why the LGBT stand so strong in unity and so strong in what they do. And so when the people come to them with so much truth and anger, um, they, t they tend to forget about love because there's this like, and, and I hate to use this word, but this is the only way I can compare it, like homophobia as Christians. And we don't realize, but we can go and love the prostitute, hug the prostitute, but when a transgender is in front of you, would you be able to wash his feet? Would you be able to hug him and love him like Jesus really did? We're so quick to do truth, truth. Come to Jesus. What you're doing is nasty. Da, da, da. But where is the love and the compassion of that person that is crying in the pillow, wanting to be free from homosexuality? There was hour, There were days where I would cry on my pillow. Bro, I would cry because I wanted to be like you. I wanted to be heterosexual, but there was just... I tell people all the time, the enemy didn't go to my crib when I was a baby and say, I, here's a clipboard. I need you to circle your sin or your temptations that I'm going to No, it, the enemy knows what's on you there. And so I, that's why sometimes when the LGBT says, I, I didn't get to choose. They're right. The enemy didn't allow you to choose what temptation he was going to give you. That just became all of life. And I remember. And so a lot of pastors don't see how the struggle for us, how it was to even come out of the closet. Now it's the cool thing to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, even if you're not, they're saying they are. You know what I mean? Because it's just they don't want to be canceled. And um, but yeah, it, it, it's I, I just remember just um, just praying that you know, and just asking the Lord, man, like I I really don't want to be this way, but because I am, I I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of struggling. And so um, yeah, so after that year, I remember seeing two friends at the mall, in uh, Millennium Mall, and they had yeah, I was at Millennium Mall. It was around my birthday weekend, and. Uh, I was struggling. I was struggling. I was just, I was getting ready to give up on God, on everything. And I'd see these two guys and they're just like, hey, we haven't seen you in a year. Where have you been? And, you know, I was just, I've been going to church, kind of, you know, a little th witness. And, and in that, they were just like, hey, well, we're going to Pulse. Do you want to go? And in my mind, I was just like, ah, uh, I was like, okay. I told him I'd go. And so, and then a friend of mine, I called a friend that I haven't talked to forever. And I said, hey, I'm going out to polls. I really want to see you guys. It's been a year where, you, you know, let's turn up. Yeah. And then that's when they were like, well, there's a house party that we go to. Because I don't know if you remember, but at the clubs, especially the gay clubs, those drinks were expensive. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I remember just getting ready for, uh, going to the house. Oh, let me, let me retract. My uh, mom calls me, my, my prophetic mom. <laughs> my god 
And I was just like, uh, I remember when she she picked up the phone. Well, I picked up the phone and she said, I need you to sit down and I have a dream that I want to share with you. And I was just like, oh, Lord. You know, when moms have dreams, it's just... And she said, in this dream, um, you were running for your... You were in a nightclub and you were running for your life. Yeah. There was blood all over your clothes and people were dying. And you looked up and you said, mom, help me. And she looked down and she instantly woke up i don't know about you but my mom being a prayer mom she probably called all of florida <laughs> or all of texas at the time where they were living at she called the whole prayer intercessor team all over the world i mean she told me today that she had people in paris praying for me like that they were connected to she was just she felt an assignment and she started calling people and um it went through one ear throughout the other I remember then after that, I ended up at a church at, at the same church I was going to and a, and a prophet came into the church and a real well-known prophet. And um, he, I just coming in from work real late and I sat in the back and I remember him picking me out of everybody and saying, hey, come up to the front. I have a word for you. And I was just like, whoa, this is this is intense. <laughs> and he started prophesying over me. And, and I remember him saying things like you're going to be in front of legislation. You're going to be in front of pastors that have been seasoned for years. And and you're going to be uh, the Lord sending you to the nations and, and all this stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, I laugh about it because I'm like that. I looked at it and I was just like. This prophecy ain't for me. Like, you must have got me mixed up with Sister Ye Ye over there or Brother yeah. Flip Flop. That, like, that is not me. I don't understand the political language. I don't understand, you know, I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, wow. And then growing up in church, you always get prophetic word because my parents were pastors. And so for some reason, the pastor's kids always got, for, for me, I was just like, oh, here's another prophecy. I get it. I'm at church, you know, and I didn't understand the weight of it. And then um, as I'm going to Pulse Nightclub, um, I have two friends that I dearly love that I actually um, gave them the salvation issue while I was in the world. <laughs> it, even the Lord was using me when I was in the world where I was able to minister and love on them. And they got saved. And so years, wow. year, yes, years, years later, they follow me to this church that I'm at there. Like, where are you at? And I'm like, I just gave my life to the Lord and I'm doing the church. And they were like, we're moving. We're going where you are at. And I was like, okay. And yeah, I remember um, and the Lord still using them to this day. I mean, they're on fire for the Lord. And I remember just um, we were in the car on our way to the hotel because I wanted to stay at a hotel. And they were just we were back and forth, back and forth. Just they were just like, we want to celebrate your birthday. We don't think you should go. Like, please stay here. We'll take you downtown. We'll pay for your dinner. Let's just have a great time for your birthday weekend. And, and in my mind, my mind's already made up. I've been struggling. In my mind, I'm thinking, I need to be around people that get it. Yeah. I need to be around people that understand. And it's just like, it, it was so tough. And, and that's another thing that we don't realize is that we've been so cultivated in that family. It's like losing a family. So that's why I say they're, uh, their giants are different. And so it's when you're ministering to someone that struggles with same-sex attraction, you have to take all that into account and ask for the wisdom of the Lord. Because, like I said, there are some couples in same-sex attractions that preach the gospel and evangelize way more than we do. You know what I mean? And so to tell them that you have to rip this away from them, and, and, and then you got kids involved, that these little kids are... They see two moms as the heroes, and now you're pulling them away from that because you're going in with this mean message. So now you, these kids are being raised up with bitterness towards God and the church. Um, yeah, bro, I, I remember just going to the house party after that. I ended up going. I, I said, you know what? I'm going. I'm, I need to turn up. I, my mind was made up to go to the club. I had a cute outfit. You know, I was ready to go. I was, I was ready. And so... Um, I remember being at that house party and I saw a friend of mine that now is in ministry and the Lord uses him powerful. That was also in the nightclub shooting was shot six times. He's one of my best friends now. And uh, so I remember um, him. We were at the he saw me at the house. He's like, where you been? I haven't seen you forever. And I told him, I was like, man, I've been in church. And and I don't think it like he captured that. He was like, are you going to Pulse? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to go to Pulse. And I remember like he left early and I didn't see him again till way later where he was serving the Lord. And, uh, but, uh, I remember it took us 30 minutes to get out. Like the people that are no longer with us that died at Pulse nightclub, they were saying things like, 
we have a lot of alcohol here. We got a lot of food here. Why do we need to go to the club? Let's just stay here and turn up. And it, it took us about 30 minutes because everyone was just like, do you want to go? Do you want to stay? And, and we were back and forth until finally everyone in the house was just like, let's go turn up at Pulse and then we'll after party here. And so everyone took their Ubers. Everyone headed out to the club. And I remember just getting there and there was this sense of like, this is where I'm supposed to be. You know, there was this sense of like, because there was, there was, I was having fun, but there wasn't that true joy that only the Lord can give. And so I remember just walking in the club and it, there was this wrestle in my soul. Like, you know, you're not supposed to be here. Like the Lord set you free. Like, oh. he, you know, and then another side of me is like, well, the church doesn't get it. You know, they could talk about pornography. They could talk about their struggles and their stuff. And it's in it. There's a process. But when it comes to homosexuality, you need to change by tomorrow. I need you to look and walk and talk like if you're a heterosexual Christian. And so there's no grace on that. And so and and, and you can stay sick, but don't stay sick too long. And so. Um, so, yeah, there was that wrestle at Pulse. And I remember seeing a lot of people that were that I ministered to and they were telling me, wait. Like you were just evangelizing to me a week ago, but now you're back here in the club. And so there was a lot of, there's so much happening that night, you know? And I was just like, wow, just my head down in shame, like, wow. But, you know, um, I remember just start, I started drinking again. You know, I was just like, I'm drinking and I need to, you know, I need to have a good time here. And so, um, yeah, I started drinking and I was getting a little tipsy and stuff. And then all of a sudden it was last call for alcohol. People were closing out their tabs and it was a Puerto, it was a Latin club. So, um, especially in the Latin community, like there's this sense of even more unity. Um, and so that's what proposed night club was that night. It was a Latin club. And, and so we went to that and, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And then I remember just being, uh, and I say it was a lot of fun because it's crazy how people sometimes share their testimony and they don't forget the fun that they used to have. Like, it's almost like they try to hide it. Like, in love, you have fun. <laughs> Stop playing. Like, now you have the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. It's a whole different dynamic. But you did have fun, you know. And, and so um, I remember, yeah, let's call for alcohol. And I remember I looked over to my friend that invited me and his boyfriend was dancing there. And I, I said, man, it sounds like fireworks. And if you're from Orlando, you know that you got Disney, Universal, all that. Yeah. And so I'm thinking, I'm like, wow, they sound are they they sound closer than ever today, you know, at Pulse Nightclub. And and um he was like, Yeah, wow. And at that instant, I remember that I saw the shooter right there. He was right in front of me. I would say from here to that door right there. Um no more than ten feet, bro. To find out later on the angels on the floor being shot up, like literally five feet in front of me. Like we were like really close to each other. Um, people were, uh, I saw the, the guns, I could smell the gunpowder. I could see the flashing of the muzzle, um, when he was shooting. I mean, like if it's just right now that I could just picture and see it. And, um, all of my military training from Iraq and Afghanistan could never prepare me for something like this. You know, I remember people saying, well, you were in the military. And I was like, no, you got to understand. Like when you go out to Iraq, you're almost prepared. You got full battle rattle on you know you got your weapon in your hand you're ready you got your battle buddies but this was just you know it happened so quick the enemy was there to kill steal and destroy and so i remember just uh people running people being shot um the the guy that invited me to the club he jumped in front of me and sh got shot his boyfriend jumped in front of him got shot they both on the everyone's bleeding crying running into the bathrooms but some of the friends that i ministered also didn't make it that night and who would ever think that my mom's prop my mom's dream was coming to pass that night i was running for my life and i was on survival mode in my mind the last thing i'm thinking about is repent it was crazy because at any moment i would have real quick and i wasn't going to a good place you know my heart wasn't ready i pray that a lot of them i believe a lot of them at the last minute called upon the name of jesus you know um because they come from christian homes i knew a lot of them personally that i knew came from christian homes angel himself prophesied out of that you know he said you promised you told my mom that i would preach to nations you told my mom that i would i would preach the gospel i'm not leaving here dead in that i remember leaving and and there's a, a backyard a backyard patio of Pulse nightclub. And um, there was a fence, the, the fences were so high and my mind was not thinking of jumping over. Um, and we were kicking the fence, me and this guy, and we finally kick it open. My leg gets stuck in there. It, my leg twist and I fall on the ground. So I'm in pain. I can't walk. I am just in so much pain. The door swings wide open 
of the, the where the club's at and where the guy's shooting and I'm hearing him I'm actually seeing him and I, I and and all I knew what to do bro was to call my mom and dad and ask for forgiveness because I knew that was gonna be it yeah I called them and I, I remember my mom hearing her mom hello and this is like late at night and she's hearing gunshots and all that on the background and I'm like mom and my phone dies almost like the dream she had where she was like I was like mom help me like it almost was like literally to the T later to find out that um when this guy comes into the club I don't know who he is to this day helps me picks me up by uh, and carries me over to the 7-Eleven and sits me down and then what's even more crazy is that right where I escaped from there was a car that had bombs inside of it that the shooter was ready to detonate at any moment and by the grace of God, that never happened. I remember just sitting across and looking at the club and, and wondering, where are the police? Where is everybody at? Like someone get a hold of, you know, some help for my friends are in the club. There's still people in the club and you can hear the screaming and the shooting pop, 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 like going like off. And it was intense. And I remember even in then there was a little lady that came by and walked by and she goes, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. And then she lift up her hands and started praying i turned around to look for her she was gone too and i was just like because there was so much going on and and that you won't hear this on cnn nbc or anything like that but there was a group of lesbians that i remember that would grab together and started praying they didn't know what to do so they got together and they started praying in a circle they knew when you instruct your children in the word no matter how lost they are they'll never depart um honestly like even for the struggler like how many times did you get offended with your dad? You know, and that's that spirit of orphan that the Lord wants to break off from us. And I feel that um, we need we need fathers to step in, you know, because we, we've been abandoned. We've been rejected, especially with the spirit of homosexuality. It's it's really tough when it feels and it like it's real love, real you know, um, so there's a lot of healing and a lot of grace that's needed in the process. That's why these things can't happen right away. There are things that are being knocked off of me right now, you know, in my walk. There's things that, because I had a fiance and I was going to get married to a woman. There were things that as a single man, I would have never been able to learn. And God allowed her to come into my life for a season to, to teach, teach me some stuff. So you had a fiance um, in Christ. Yeah. That you were going to marry. And in that season that she was with you, she taught you a lot. Oh, yeah. She taught me a lot of stuff that um, being a homosexual man like, for me, I was more uh, the bottom in the relationship. So for me, guys opened the doors for me. Guys took me out to dinner. They took care of me. I was more like, I want to say, the female in the relationship. Yeah. Although I was still masculine, you know? And but you were the one that was... Yeah, the, the, I was the, that one. And so, um, and just because I'm short, too. So a lot of the guys I did it were a lot taller. So, you know? Yeah. And then in that dynamic, um, now that I am I met this girl, like, the Lord's teaching me how to be the man in the relationship, the how alpha. me to open yeah. in the door yeah. and, you know, all those things. And it was a struggle that I needed grace <laughs> in, you, you know you, what you I mean? Were, yeah, because you were so spoiled. Yeah, like, and, and, and I needed a father to come in at that moment too, mm -hmm. you know, um, and especially like, uh, and I know a lot of, it's it's a lot easier for men that live that whole life, their whole life. Like they sometimes they don't need a father, you know, to do that. It's just automatic, but because that was not what I was doing all my life, mm. I needed someone to help me steward that. And so um, there was a lot of stuff I needed healing from and a lot of stuff that uh, I'm glad that we didn't end up getting married because there was a lot of pain and hurt that I needed to process and heal from first before I decided to be a dad and a husband. And I'm glad that the Lord allowed that to stop. Now she's happily married with someone and I bless them in that marriage and I love that because I wasn't ready for that. And I would have passed generational curses. I would have like probably messed up along the way. You know what I'm saying? And so um, that's so you, super so you, so you important. Gener generational curses. You, you said something earlier. Yeah. You said, you said my dad dealt with rejection. Yes. Yeah. Do you think that was the root of it all? Oh yeah. And, and that's the other thing is that with homosexuality, that's just not it. There's roots and things that have happened in the, my life that have actually uh, walked me on that journey and so there's things I need healing on you know like I said I was trying to pray the gay away it was like my focus all that when it was just like wait but you have abandonment issues you have rejection here that needs to be healed from a father you know you have deceit that you need to get rid of because mm -hmm. you deceived you learn how to deceive I learned how to deceive my friends my family everyone with girlfriends because mm -hmm. I didn't want them to know that I was dating guys and that yeah, yeah. And so there were so many uh, things that I needed to be delivered from and free from, you know, before, as a Christian, as a Christian, 
You know what I'm saying? As a Christian and someone serving the Lord after Jesus, like there's just things that we, you know, need to walk out. And God gives us grace to walk beside men that know their identity, to, to speak identity into us, to father us, to be there for us. Um, and wow. so, and, and a lot of men feel like almost scared because they think that we're going to fall in love with them. And it's like, man, you can't even pull girls. What makes you think? <laughs> <laughs> Can I be real? Like, and so, so it's kind of like their rejection. Yeah, so it's another form yeah. of rejection happening, yep. you know? Um, and so when men can just, you know, be able to change diapers, even if that's not your kid, you know, um, spiritually speaking, yeah. um, a lot of these kids, a lot of these, these, these people coming out of the lifestyle will come from orphans to now adopted in Christ and they'll mm. be able to walk into that identity in sonship. Sonship. Yes. Yes. And yes. so, yeah, I, I remembered looking, I was at the hospital at this time, looking at the TV screen and looking at all my friends that were dying you know it, so it was an all-day event i remember little by little just friends dead and dead. i remember that 7-eleven yeah i remember when we went yes yeah, that's, 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 that's where i was sitting there on the corner the woman prayed over you yep the, the maybe potentially yep. the angel that brought you there that yeah you know, probably prayed us who, who knows who knows and then you yeah. ended up trans, uh to a hospital yeah and I, re I remember just uh even in that night uh because of my military skills i was helping people because they were bleeding out i was helping them stop the bleeding you know how we learned first yeah. aid and all that and, and they, i really believe one of my friends is still here because i was able to uh stop the bleeding a system and everything wow, um wow, wow, wow. yeah and and so so much was happening that night um to make a long story short i was at the hospital just yeah just sitting there just like texting friends now that i have um juice on my phone and no one re would reply and then i see their faces on the screen and so you could only imagine 49 people 49 of your friends that you're trying not all of them were my friends but i knew a lot of them and a lot of people there um especially the ones that invited me you know, they were real close to me. And and, and so uh, imagine trying to grieve that. And then this is where this is very important. There were people from the church in the name of God trying to come into where there's grieving family, grieving people. There's, there's a sensitive time, you know. And they were saying things like God didn't make Adam and Eve. He made Adam and uh, God didn't make Adam and Steve. He made Adam and Eve. Like, mm. that's what you get. That's judgment from God. You're going to hell. Mm. And so there's this, like, that's why I think our nation, and this is very important. This is why our nation is the way they are. Because in the moment where we needed the bride to be and position herself and bring in a, a steward of revival, the enemy used it and brought a whole bunch of condemnation. shame, condemnation. I, and I feel convicted, man. Man, I'm telling I've you. I've used that. It, yeah, we've all. I mean, I've, I've heard said it, it everywhere. I, I said it like I didn't make it. And even with the Post Nightclub thing, I yeah. said, like, you know, this is a product yeah. of, you know, sin and all this. But then, yeah. like, like I said, like. Because you're almost telling the Adam and Steve that they don't have no place in the kingdom and there's no opportunity for man, them. I feel, I repent. And for everybody, it, I repent. Like. And <laughs> it's it's powerful, man. It, it, and it's it's like it's like even for Pride Month. Do you remember last month how yeah. crazy social media was? It was crazy, man. Yo, I had so many friends that were telling me I wanted to be a part of what you're doing, but I don't no longer want a part of this. If that's how the Christian community is acting towards this right now, I mean, they were going in. And of course, not everyone that says they're in Christ are in Christ. And yeah. I had to sit them down and say, hey, Jesus also felt that pain with the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the people that he came. But at the same time, like I saw it and I grieved. Like the, the house that I live in, it's a bunch of people that have come out of the lifestyle. And so God has put us together in a house and we're, we're, we're building a community together. Because that's also another thing that the Lord was like, you're not going to get through this season unless you come into community. Because there's things I need to heal from you and you can't do it alone. Um, and so, and that's another issue that, you know, we tend to isolate ourselves because we, we're not women and we're, and, and the men, we can't connect with the men because some of us don't get into sports like you guys do and hunting and all this stuff. And we might like art and we might be a little creative and fashion and all that. And because we don't fit the mold of those two, the enemy uses us to isolate ourselves. And so mm. when you find yourself in, I, that's why it's so important for the men to come around these guys and show them love, invite them out to eat, hang out with them. And, and I believe the Lord is cultivating family in our nation again, in our world right wow, now again. Wow, wow, wow. Um, so, yeah. And, 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 Quick question. Yeah. You've been praying for me? 
Absolutely, bro. Since I started seeing your stuff at Pulse Nightclub and everything, the Lord uh, tenderized my heart. And wow. I knew that this was an assignment. I don't know if you remember, but before this podcast, I told you um, I was fighting it. I, I mean, I was fighting it for days. There was a, I was driving in the car and I just started crying and, 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 and tearing up. And I'm like, Lord, what? Like, sometimes you're crying. You're like, why did this just happen? Like, I don't understand the meaning of it. Yeah. <laughs> and I just remember just even texting you yesterday and was you know, almost trying to, like, say, hey, can we do this another time? Like, there's just this warfare, this stuff going on in the spirit that I, I can't. And when you said, and I, and I felt, you know, yeah. when I talked to you on the phone, I felt convicted from the Pulse nightclub video, mm. and I was like, was that was that wrong, Lord? I was like, nah, I'm exposing darkness. Like maybe it wasn't, but I actually in the spirit when I prayed, I saw you praying for me. Wow. Like, like the Lord showed me, like, yeah. Could I, I would be very honest. Yeah. I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. When we first sat down here, the Lord said, I sent him on assignment for you and oh. for this video. Wow. About to, when I was looking at you, the Lord said he was sent on assignment because of the love you carry. Mm. And it just, like I said, it brought conviction. It brought mm. compassion, like just this process from when we first talked to right now. And I felt in the spirit, the enemy was gonna try to keep you from coming mm. because of how I've been exposing, like me along with a, a bunch of other people, yeah. like the way I, I was doing it with exposing mm -hmm. darkness. And so it's funny that you say that because even the Lord um, whispered in my ear, when you share and you love, to also remember that John the Baptist mantle over you, that you're preparing the way, but that Jesus not ever comparing me to Jesus at no <laughs> way, but that there was a different, that like the body of Christ is called to different things. Mm -hmm. And so I love what you're doing. And I love the fact that the Lord is tenderizing your heart because he's opening massive doors for you. So in that, I feel like language is super important in this hour. Man. You know what I mean? Especially with like, Gen Z with with every generation, but more Gen Z because they were more they're more being exposed to the good of this. And so Hollywood is painting it. Everyone's painting. Even churches are affirming right now. And so we're at a dangerous hour where Gen Z is like, I don't know what to do with this. Mm -hmm. And so fathers are not being fathers. And so and no, my we're not being hugged and shown emotions. And and I talked to another guy the other day that says my dad won't let me cry. Every time I shed a tear or something, he like shames me and says men don't cry and you better not oh, cry in this house. Man. And so and he's not even he wasn't even struggling with same sex attractions till then, you know, because he was just like whoa. And so a lot of times, um, at least for me, I was actually looking for a father, and the enemy perverted it with men. And so mm. now I'm looking into men, into older guys, or 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 find, kind of fitting that mold. And then even then, like I was hooked on pornography, and and so that's another issue that the Lord had to free me from. And 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 so I remember just uh, a friend had me close my eyes, and he was just like, "Hey, bro, I want you to go back to when you were a kid. Like, just think of when you were a kid when you first uh, felt rejection." And I remember being in a gym, and there were uh, I was getting bullied because I was shorter. I had these glasses that made my eyes look so big. I had bifocals. So the kids, you know what I mean? That was, a, that, that was yeah, the kids, yeah. they loved that. I didn't, <laughs> but they did. <laughs> and so they bullied me. And uh, um, I closed my eyes. And, and that's where the root of wanting to be with another man for protection, wow. wanting to be sexually. And so sometimes we, we hit like same sex attracted people with so much stuff that we don't realize where they came from. We don't realize they're. I heard a guy. Um, I heard a pastor, a big pastor, say, um, you, you will never know a man until you walked in his shoes. And so we use the card of truth, but in actuality, the enemy is using it for to be mean. It's and so, condemned. yeah, to, and, and especially with this, you know, because a lot of the millennials, a lot of the boomers, like they don't know what to do with this either. And they want to like share but they do it in this place of being mean Christians. And so now it's just, I'm telling you, like there, this, there's a new giant in the land and we need to be strategic with it. So, so how, so what would you recommend for me? Like, as a, I, I want to like, cause I'm, I'm feeling that right now. Like I want to expose darkness, but like, I remember earlier you mm -hmm. said, you said um, in the church, they never spoke about it. Yeah. So how, what, would, what would you think would be like the proper way as a pastor for me to expose it with, without bringing condemnation and yeah. shame, but also speaking about it since it's like, the, the elephant in the room type of deal. Well, you did the right thing. You did something that a lot of pastors won't do, and and, and you repented. 
I yeah. think that's the beginning of healing. The beginning of when we came to Jesus was through repentance. Yes. And so when pastors, when leaders of a church can say, you know what, we, we, we I don't think we did it right. You know, yeah, we share the gospel. We love Jesus. And the truth will be the truth because the truth sets you free. But there's this language, there's this compassion that the yes. Lord wants to show us to be able to walk into this land. Amen. So God, I, be, I believe that God is sending interpreters at this hour to come alongside pastors and churches because there is this massive revival. Just like you see, the, uh, like a lot of, someone told me the other day, they're like, wow, there's such a huge presence of the LGBT in businesses everywhere. And I said, because it's a setup for revival. <laughs> that means that a there's going to be a harvest of LGBT people that are gonna come into the church and God is sending interpreters right now because we can miss a move of God. And so God is bringing these people in so that we can have that language. So even like um, how you said, bringing me in or bringing others in that God has brought to you to be able to like shepherd that and, and be able to say, hey, let's have a, a conference. Uh, let's have a, a, a let's just hang out and ask the Lord to meet us together and pray into this and see what the Lord wants to do with this. And, and, and like we've done it, I've done, I've been able to, go all around the world and for the glory of God, of course, because I'm course. nobody. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but, like, but God is, he, he, It's him, the Holy Spirit. I always tell people, like, he, it, this is my story, but this is actually his story through, <laughs> through what he's doing. And, and so uh, always pointing people to Jesus as a leader, but also cultivating that place where these conversations can happen. Like, I pastor a couple of young adults. Um, um, well, not pastoring, but mentor them and stuff. And um, they they are open about some real conversations and there's healing. Why? Because I'm able to talk to them about real conversations that we're not having in the church house. I grew up in a time where you, they just said, don't have sex. That's it. Because if you do, you're out of God's will. And so there was never those conversations. Well, what, what if I wake up with a crazy dream and I don't know how to react or what if this happened, this time, what do I do with this, this, this happening that's so real. You're just telling me not yeah, to have sex. I hear that a lot. Yeah. And, and so that's what's happening right now with the LGBT. You're telling me it's nasty and I'm not supposed to do it. It's in the Bible or whatever, but you're not helping me how to, you're not how equipping me how to overcome this in the late midnight hour when nobody, the church is not around, worship is not around. It's just me, the enemy. And if I need to make this decision, and so, um, yeah, man, I'm just, just having so, this place where, hey, we're, you know, I've talked to pastors that do this uh, annually. They'll have an annual event where they'll talk about sexual identity. And so they'll go into like, you know, the stuff that happens in a marriage. They'll go into transgender uh, topics. They'll go into like homosexuality and all this other stuff. And so while we're sharing our testimonies and also building leaders, because that's super important, it comes from the house, the head. Yeah. And so if the head doesn't understand the language, you're going to yeah. have people come into this house and, and to try They'll to tell you, hey, yeah. yeah. And so the, it could be a dangerous walk to now you become affirming, and that's even more dangerous, you yep. know, to have an affirming <laughs> church. Yep. And, you need and, that balance. Right and right I can now. understand, you know, with what's going on in our country right now, like it's getting to a point where, if you don't agree with them, if you don't bow to the image, you'll be canceled. You'll be, canceled you'll be thrown into fire, you know? Exactly. I, I'm learning the balance on the other side. Yeah. Like, I first came, like, I'm, I'm still learning that balance because I'm, yeah. I'm coming, like you said, John the Baptist, like, repent, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like, I'm casting yeah, out demons. Awesome. Like, but, yeah. but now God's showing me, like, that's not, like, that you want to be more effective, you need mm -hmm. to have balance. Like, so where I'm not affirming, like, I, I'll never do that. Mm -hmm. But at the same, like with anything, yeah. any sin. I think my parents were not affirming. If they would have affirmed, they would have never been the city on a hill. They would have never been the salt that I needed when I was in a dark place and I needed the light in the room. And so it's super important to stand on truth and love and stand truth on the gospel. and love, which allows God's great. Jesus yeah. Christ. My parents, I remember they, I always wanted them to affirm me. I always wanted them to affirm my boyfriends. I remember they would never let none of my boyfriends to the house but then they would let people that are sleeping around with their boyfriends in the house, you know, and they're not married, but for some reason they wouldn't let me in the house. And so I remember the Holy Spirit speaking to my mom and dad in their prayer room and, and saying, I want you to invite them because the assignment is not only on your son, but the assignment is on everyone that I bring to this door. And by you neglecting that, so so many parents and, and people, not in my house, 
This yeah, is, they, you know what I mean? Like, out, like, like, yeah, yeah, like uh, there's no homosexuals in this house. As for me in my house, <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. so in the name of God, I've met little 12 year old, little young kids, young adults that have been kicked out of their house in the name of God, you know? And so we've got to do better. So I remember my mom and dad, uh, they called me one day. They said, hey, start bringing, you could start, why don't you two come to dinner? And I was just like, ooh, they're going to kill us. <laughs> I was like, someone's going to have to bring your baseball bat. Like, I've never heard my parents say anything like this. And because they allow the Holy Spirit to be Holy Spirit and not them be the Holy Spirit, um, my boyfriends were coming to Jesus. And all of a sudden, uh, one, of my, one of my exes, like, came to the Lord. And I don't know if he's still serving the Lord now, but the Lord used my parents with just love, relationship. Because a lot of these kids that are in the LGBTQ, they've been rejected. They, their fathers walked away from them. Their fathers don't even want anything to do with them. Mm. A lot of, the, there were stories when Pulse Nightclub happened of a lot of parents, dads, they want nothing to do with their kids at all when they were alive because they were gay. And so now these kids are coming into the church looking for the same thing, and but we're in this homophobia. We're in this like, you need to go get married with a girl because that's what uh, the fruits of the spirit look like, or you need to uh, start dressing this way because that's not what a man, you know, men don't wear pink. And it's just you know, all this stuff that really is not a salvation issue. It's not a salvation issue. And so now you're messing with the process, you know, and, and you're becoming junior Holy Spirit, bro. <laughs> and so... Bro, I feel convicted. Man, I'm telling you, I'm like, the Lord, the Lord's on this. The Lord's doing something, wow, and, wow, and, wow, and wow. so what the what the Lord, your process may look a little different from my process, but the Lord of wants course. us to have community exactly. together. So that iron sharpens iron, and my iron doesn't stab you and kill you. <laughs> um, and so I, I I really feel that the Lord is doing something in this hour, bro, where He's returning us to first love again. He's returning us to this place of love and surrender to him where I've got a mess, you've got a mess, and we're coming together and God loves us in this mess and he's walking us through. Because I've, I've noticed that in community, um, I'm starting, there's stuff that is being raised up even in the house that I'm living in that I, I needed to get fixed. Mm -hmm. Issues that I thought I was good with, but all of a sudden they're coming back around because the Lord is saying, I'm healing this place and I want you to deal with it. And if the men of God weren't in part of my life and the, you know, the spiritual father in the church I go to wasn't a part of it, then I would have never found that healing and, and restoration in my life. And so, yeah, I'm, and even more like after the um, after the the uh, that I was on the TV screen and I was looking at all the the people that died, um, I was angry because I saw the church acting a certain way, acting so like like man, it was no, no it compassion, was no, no love, no compassion, no love, and so and I can't say that I was there everybody because there were a remnant that knew that knew God. They, they were spiritually mature And enough. they would go and pray and, and love on people. But even the church was backlashing on them for doing that, saying that they were affirming. And this, not, and, this, man, this is crazy. Yeah, and so so this is why sen yeah, I'm so sensitive to June because it's the month where I feel like Christians come out of the woodwork and they don't talk about it all year. And then this is another thing that the Lord showed me is that, um, and, and he showed me to, to one of my friends that we were having this conversation and he was just like, Luis, like, but circle around a lot of these guys and they're watching rated X movies, they're watching rated R movies and they're watching, they're allowing a lot of stuff to creep into the church, but they're not talking about it. They're not talking about their sons sleeping with their girlfriends and living in an apartment, sex before marriage. But when it comes to Pride Month, they go all out. They go all out. Social yep. media goes all out with Christians and memes They're and all this stuff. Even enemy, in the political arena, Christian political arena, it's like they use this, and then they they try to get a hold of people like me to weaponize and even use it in the month of month. And I told them, uh, we've all stood stood firm and said we're not being a part of that because the Lord, there's an assignment on yes, this house. Cause, cause you'll, you'll, you know, yeah, you'll lose the, the assignment. And so it's the goodness of God that leads a man to repent. Jesus was sitting by the woman at the well. In relationship, love. She shared. He he spoke truth, but if you notice, there was a relationship being cultivated that's before he spoke truth. That's so and that's another thing that, you know, we're trying to cultivate. We're trying to fix people. When you know, some lady showed me that I was at the grocery store and I saw uh, I saw some mangoes. Uh, was it mangoes or avocado? Whatever. Um, and and I was asking her which ones are the good ones, and she was uh, this one. And then and they were at my arms' reach to be able to. 
to decipher which one was good and which one was not. And sometimes we go and try to like pick from the fruit that doesn't even, we're not even the arm's reach of it. And so if you can't disciple or if you can't reach out to that person and you have communication relationship, then I don't think that you would, I don't think that it's good to, to come at a place of being mean and angry until you've learned what that man has walked until walked. you build a relationship. Sometimes you're in a situation like how when you go evangelize, where God's giving you an, a window. Yeah, that's a whole different. That's different, you know. And and even in then you come in with love of Christ, and I see that when you express the love and and how people are just captivated by that, you know. Um, but that doesn't give us that card to be mean, you know, and mm -hmm. say that they're nasty and they're sick and all this. Like I've seen a lot of people do. Yeah. So man, yeah, that's deep, bro. Yeah, bro. Man, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, like, because I, I want this to be raw. Yeah. I, we're not, we're not gonna edit this. This yeah. is gonna be. That's cool. But like, so with social media, like my platform, it grew really quick in six months. Mm. Like I went from like a thousand, maybe less than that, to like almost over two hundred, right? That's so awesome. like, and I got really like um, zealous with social media. I was like, we gotta reach the nation. So me and Brian and some of the other production team, we sat down and we're like, we gotta figure out what goes viral so we could reach more souls. Mm. And it was with the right heart, like. Not for like, we got to be famous, but yeah. more like, I want to reach more. So like, what I kind of did during June was like, okay, um, Bar actually Barine actually told me like, look, they're exposing like LGBT, maybe you should do that. And mm. I'm like, all right, like, let's just, like, I'm already exposing yeah. witchcraft. I can relate to that because I was in it. Yeah. But like, I've never, with the LGBTQ, I never really touched it. So the post nightclub thing was like one of the first ones. Mm. And I remember I felt convicted a little. I was like, man, why do I feel a little bit off about what I just said, because it's not all the way like that, like about, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. and then it just kept going. And then I saw that it went, a lot of them went viral. I was like, okay, maybe this is what the Lord wants me to do. Mm. But I, I remember that initial conviction and that same first video is when they've commented your name. Yeah. So it's, 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 and I had a dream about you. Mm. As, as you were speaking, the Lord showed me a dream where somebody brought me to like a warehouse and um, there was a bunch of people trying to come at me. Mm. It was a bunch of people trying to kill me. Like, mm. like, and I was just fighting, I was fighting. And then, Someone in love, and it looks just look just like you. I didn't, mm. and I didn't, I didn't know who this person was. I said, come here, come here, let me take you. Took me to a warehouse and was like ministering to me and said, now go, you're good. And I remember in the dream, I literally took off like an eagle, bro. Mm. And I went, I, I, I got out of the situation yeah. that was about to destroy me. Wow. So this just like, bro, I feel yeah. the anointing. This just freed me, bro. Like, you, even as you're speaking now, I hear the Lord say, what if you were actually exposing the wickedness of the church through the LGBTQ? And so you're not just speaking to like the LGBTQ, which is a true, you know, we yeah, need to yeah, speak yeah, about yeah, of it. Of course, of course. But what if you use that same way as a target to be like, church, wake up. There's a revival. I need to expose <laughs> these pastors that, you know, no compassion, need to learn no how love. to father and, and yes. compassion and love. That would have a lot of people like, what? That's why now you're hitting home. You know what I'm saying? You're in my front yard. And that's a lot of, that's what I've learned, bro, is that um, a lot of pastors through this have sit in that same position where they have, we've had pastors come to me and just start crying and hugging me. And I'm like, are you okay? Can I pray for you? And they're like, I need you to forgive me because I've been doing this wrong all of my life. And they'll tell me I've been a homophobic Christian as a, pa a homophobic Christian, as a pastor, and I've led so many people astray because of my language, because of wow. in the name of truth and the gospel. And I've had fathers come up to me and say, my, my son doesn't want nothing to do with me no more because for all this time I've done it wrong. I, I've, I've hated, I've, I've, mm. there's this bitterness. Like I have love towards all the other sins like and compassion, easy. like it's easy. But if a transgender was to sit here right now, would I be willing to wash his feet? <laughs> And you know what's crazy is like naturally in the church, even with evangelizing, you've seen it. Mm -hmm. I am loving towards yeah, L absolutely. Like, but, yep. but it's just like this June month. I felt, I guess it was like, bro, it was not peer pressure, but it was like me hopping on the bandwagon to go yeah. viral. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it was I, everywhere. Social. Yeah, like yeah, I, I, I couldn't I, I'm believe. I'm gonna say this like <laughs> on camera, like forgive me for real. Mm -hmm. Like I actually mean that. Like like if we were off camera, I would say the same thing. Like, mm -hmm. and I want everyone to see it because maybe this will touch other social yeah. media influencers. With platforms yeah but like forgive Absolutely. me and, and anyone thank watching you thank you for paving the way for repenting you know and so because a lot i feel that that's what's bringing in healing and revival because a lot of people like me we need to hear that from the church we need to hear that you know and then you have 
the Pharisees and Sadducees, oh, we don't need to repent. That's the truth of the gospel. And it's just like, okay, well, then stay at the same place. You know what I mean? And don't that's what grow. happened in the dream. <laughs> wow. I took off and I saw myself growing mm. stadiums mm. after I got out of the warehouse. Yeah. And that's what the Lord told me. is like, after you get out of this situation, I didn't know what it was. I, I was mm. like, is it this? Is it this? And I've been waiting for the dream to be like, to come to fruition, like to, to, to come to pass. Yeah. Bro, and the guy looked just like you in the dream. I was like, Listen, there's a revival coming. Yes. And we need we need we need all hands on uh -oh. deck. And 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 the listen, the LGBTQ got it right. They got unity right. They got yes. even if it's a counterfeit family, they got that. And so we as the body of Christ, if the churches and the pastors could unify with what we're doing, it's almost like it's almost like because this is so loud outside. Pastors are scared to jump in behind us. They're scared to catch the wind of this. Mm -hmm. But God is going to move like the Jesus movement with Lonnie Frisbee. Yes, yes, and yes, if you yes. didn't know, Lonnie Frisbee also had same-sex attractions yeah, 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 and yeah, HIV. Yeah, from, and the, so, from the same sex. Yeah. Yep, yep. And so I believe that that mantle is coming back, is back. And wow. I believe that there's a massive wave. Before you came here, I preached on this on YouTube Live. Oh, wow. 30 minutes, I said the mantle is God's take, God's is he's taking yeah. mantles off of certain people that won't catch it mm. and placing it on the on the people. Yeah. That, and I said, there's a shift in the kingdom. Yeah, it's like God oh, told me it. that yeah. there's a shift, and the people that are rising up that understand like love, yeah. compassion, understand what God's doing. Yeah, they're gonna receive that mantle. Yeah, you can't grow if you don't catch what God's doing. He's he's like it's it's always it's a new thing. Yeah. And like you said, Bob glory, Jones, yeah. 100,000 100, people. 100,000. That's the first wave of the revival. Yeah. The revival was supposed to, you said, billions. Yeah, and there's a, they're already coming into the churches. I mean, I hear it all the time. Like, my prodigal came back. Like, he was in the lifestyle forever. Like, 100,000. And though that first wave would operate in intercession. And, and it's crazy how, like, the Lord has brought us to a house of prayer church where it's 24 hours worship and mm. prayer, bro. You can go that 3 in the morning, 6 in the morning. They're still worshiping and praying they have people that come in and do rotations in atlanta in atlanta georgia and it is it there's a move of god and even the the, the place that i'm at right now there are people that struggle with same-sex like god is doing a revival with L the people there like there are so many people that are coming out of the lifestyle and that are are coming to this church we see it all the time and i and i know that other churches around the nation that's happening where they're coming in because the churches are repenting that's something our pastors did they got on their knees and they said we are sorry and they it was i mean we all cried it was beautiful and they started seeing revival now i'm telling you there people are literally moving just to come and be a part of what god is doing with that and and yeah there's a revival and so i feel that it's like a volcano erupting, we need the man. unity of the church we need the church to become one and the Come and catch the wind of this and start talking about this because when you don't talk about this in the house they'll go outside trying to find answers. And that's that's how it's been. And so this is a call to repentance for the church. This is a call for revival and awakening for the church. Yes. I just felt I saw a vision as you were speaking. It's like a new bait for a new type of fish. Yeah. And I think if someone is watching right now too, I don't, don't change the dial. Don't low flip this. Don't click off of this. I really feel that God is speaking to some people right now. Amen. It's like, yeah. to, like bringing them to repentance. Yeah, bringing them to repentance, even for that same-sex struggler. No, yes. he's not alone. And and this conversation was not a coincidence. I think it's awesome that God is cultivating something in this hour. He is awakening his bride. Listen, I, I, it's, I my friends make fun of me because I say this quote all the time, but I super love it. And it's the fact that God is raising up eunuchs in this hour to throw Jezebel off the roof again. Bro, and so I can't if you just said that. And 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 if we as the body of Christ will learn how to cultivate disciple these spiritual eunuchs that are from the LGBTQ, we'll be able to help steward and throw Jezebel off the roof again so that God can have his way in this nation again. Bro, I just heard somebody a, a, a man of God, a well-known man of God on the internet, I'm not going to say mm -hmm. his name. Friend a friend of mine say about a month two months ago I was eating dinner with him. And we were preaching to a same-sex attraction, a male at the front. He was raised in a Christian home, all that. Mm -hmm. And we started praying for him. And he literally released that word. He mm. said, you ever think about, uh, you know, uh, about you know what a eunuch is? Yes. Said, and I'm just like, why uh -huh. is he saying that? I never heard that. Uh -huh. no. Jezebel. And he, yeah, and that's what he said. He said they get the to get Jezebel yeah. off the roof. And I was just yeah. like, and I was like, God, and God's like, I'm going to reveal it to you more. And, and bro, mm -hmm. you just confirmed that. That's mm. crazy. Yeah. I, I mean, it, right now it's the spirit of Jezebel. You know what I mean? That's, what That's it on is. the Orlando, land. Orlando. Yeah. Around the nation. Yeah. 
Yeah. We got to get that witch off the roof. So yeah. Get to the dogs. Yeah. And what happened at that time? The prophets were running into the caves. Scared. Elijah she scared was, out of his She was killing the prophets. That's what's happening now. The prophets, the pastors that need to stand in position are being killed off by silence and being canceled. Oh so the only thing they know how to do out of fear is to affirm. And so while they're affirming, they're allowing the Jezebel to roam the territory that she has no legal access to roam in. But you need that. You need that Jehu, right? You like need that. that Jehu, man. You need that person to repent and and stand yeah. up for 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 what's the truth of the gospel and love. You know, Elijah anointed him in a in a cellar. Come on, he was drinking, man. He was drinking like a <laughs> God anointed. Yeah. Hopped on his chair. Yeah, and God chair. is also raising up Elijahs, interpreters, Elijah's, yes, to come into these lands and to call fire down from heaven. Because they say we can't change, right? That that's the fire. And it, it, they say we can't change. They say, why don't you call your God down from, you know, to to burn here? And and what did ha he called fire from heaven? Well, for and the Holy by God. saying we can change, change oh. is possible through Christ Jesus. That's the fire that's coming down from heaven. And people are like, oh, they can't change. Look at this guy was on fire for God, and now he's in the LGBTQ and this and this and that. And it's like th there's this question: Is your God truly real? Is he who he says he is? But there are Elijahs that are calling heaven from fire and saying, yes, I believe. I'll, I, you might not see the fire just yet, but just wait. God is on the it's way. Come. And fire came down. So and burned I mean, everything we're talking up. about a God that split the oceans open, mm. you know, and we're talking about a God that said, I'm putting my son in a virgin. And you talking about he can't change you from that. <laughs> I really had a dream one time of the Lord literally walking us through signs and because I have HIV. And so even that part oh, wow. is my story. You know, of just being sexually promiscuous and then finding out I had HIV. And like I saw myself with the negative, with the positive report and the negative report, because I believe that at that 100,000 are going to be walking in signs and miracles that this earth hasn't seen yet. I'm talking about laying hands over transgender. And then all of a sudden they wake up in the morning and all their natural parts are back in alignment. You know, that's the kind of stuff that I believe we're moving into. But the church has to awaken and position herself as the body of Christ to catch wind of what God is doing. Mm. You know, you feel the glory, don't you? Yeah. Oh yeah, man. I was almost start speaking in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that, yeah, like you said, like miracle signs and wonders that we've never seen. Yeah. Yeah, it's the beginning. It's that it's they're like the forefront, like to, yeah. and then it's gonna just be a ma like you said, like a mass. And exit. you can miss the move of God. We oh, have I don't for want so to, many. Man. Yeah, me I neither, man. To, That's bro. what I'm saying. Like, and, and 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 we we've got to catch it. We've and I believe God is 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 awakening His people right now. You know, He's positioning people right now and and sounding the alarm. There's a tsunami on the way. There's you know, like when we get weather, like if a tornado's yes. come in or tsunami, you hear the sirens. I believe right now we're hearing the sirens of God and saying awakening is coming, revival's coming. Can you catch it? Will you catch it? I'm not gonna miss it, man. <laughs> I, that's why, like, like, I'm. Oh man, I just thank the Lord for this interview because I, I, it's, it's crazy. It's caught on camera. Yeah, <laughs> it's authentic. It, it, it's it's raw. But man, um, I don't even know what questions I have. I just, <laughs> I think that was pretty much everything. Like, man, it's, it's, and um, what recommend for like so everyone coming out of the LGBTQ community that's that are already are coming out, and that will continue to come out for the hundred thousand plus many others that will come out, um. What, do you, what, what, what advice would you give them? You're not alone. And to trust the process, you know? Trust the process. process looks different for everybody. But um, one of my spiritual fathers that actually pastors a church here, he told me one day, he said, Luis, if you take a cake out of the oven a little too early, it's going to upset your stomach and it's going to be the nastiest cake you ever taste. Mm. But you have to wait for that process until the cake is finished baking in the oven. And when you take it out, it's going to be the most delicious, moist, ready cake to eat. And everyone that sits at that table will be able to taste and see that that, ta that cake was good. And so we have to understand to trust that process that it might look messy, but God is not afraid of a mess. God's not afraid of your mess. I think mm. at church growing up, we've been so used to like, you've got to come out of like, you could be sick, but just don't stay sick too long. You got to come out of that bed. And it's like, you can't tell doctors at the, you can't tell pe sick people in the hospital, like, hey, you need to get ready. You need to get out of here. No, you have to trust the process of them getting healed and recovering from that. Even getting out of the hospital, they, they have that recovery at home. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like we, we, we as a church could um, ask for grace and people's process and to love them that they might mess up, but we're right here 
to carry them back up. You know, in the military, we don't leave nobody behind. No one gets left behind. And we don't leave our wounded on the battlefield. We go out and we give them first aid and we get them back in the fight. But what's happening is a lot of them are leaving them in the, in the battlefield, getting shot up and dying. Yeah. And that's what's happening. And, and, and instead of like pointing fingers and saying, oh, this guy fell, this guy fell. No, no, no. We're going back in the battlefield and we go together. We go to the Come wall on. together and we're going to go rescue you and we're going to go give you first aid and get you back in the fight. And so instead of like, you know, um, I see a lot of also YouTubers and people exposing, oh, this person is, but what are we doing? Are we, are we calling these people? Are we, are we going to the battlefield to go pick them up to making sure they're okay? Yeah. That's it's a whole like, different like, YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> like exposing men of God and like, yeah. like, like, yeah, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, the Lord, the Lord definitely uh, showed me that that wasn't that was that wasn't Him. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's the best advice is just trust your process and then that you're not alone. And I think that a lot of the the people that are struggling with same sex attraction, they think they're alone, you know, and they think they've got to do this alone. So it makes it so hard because you you it's like a light switch. Like you're telling me, I got to turn everything off that I thought was my identity mm. a murderer doesn't think it's an identity a liar doesn't call himself a liar like that's my identity it's only like homosexuality because it's a different giant in the land it's it's a confusing it's confusion you know what yes. i'm saying so it's confusing people to think that this is so real that this is who i am when even if you were born this way john 3 3 says you must be born again mm. and, and 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 so there's this new identity that you have to there's just not god doesn't just want your old heart he wants to give you a brand new one and so to be able to steward that and disciple that you need grace you need god's grace in this time and god's grace to take out that giant <laughs> <laughs> do you want do you want to say a prayer for um pastors that i believe need to repent that yeah. will repent from this video and then um just anything you feel that you just want to say a prayer yeah. for the, for anybody okay well, first, I want to just say that you're not alone and that I believe reinforcements are here. I believe that God is sending interpreters of people that can stand beside these um, leaders and kind of just welcome in this new revival that's on the way. I believe God's about to do a massive thing and we need all hands on deck. So right now, Father, I pray and I thank you for this podcast. I thank you that if this doesn't go viral, it's going to go for the one. And you left the 99 for the one. So I thank you for that person that is listening, that is struggling with same-sex attraction and have tried to pray the gay away and have no hope whatsoever. And so, Father, I thank you that you're reinforcing faith. You're reinforcing hope right now to the hopeless. I thank you that you are awakening and tenderizing the hearts of pastors, of leaders that are watching right now, YouTubers, people from all around. I, I know you're tenderizing their heart right now, and I ask that you would bring joy, not condemnation or shame, but, Father, a, a spirit of repentance, God, that they would be able to feel the goodness of God, that they would be able to find grace in that, and, Lord, that you would usher them in this new wave that 100,000, we partner with the prophetic word. We say 100, we call those evangelists, prophets, pastors, missionaries. We call them out in the mighty name of Jesus to take position as the 100,000 that would come out. An exodus, another exodus in our time. God, would you lead them out of Egypt? And that they, Father, would walk out of the LGBT into identity with the Father as sons and daughters. And that they would operate in signs and wonders of healing of HIV, STDs, even for transgender people that have removed their parts, that have lost their parts due to surgery. We say that it would grow again, that all mm. of a sudden parts would begin to grow again. And, and Father, you can do it because you split the oceans open. Father, you put your son, your begotten son inside of a virgin. And if you could do it with them, you can do it today. You can do it with us. And so I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. I thank you for the fire that is burning in this nation, in this world. And we are here to partner with your dream, Father. We're here to partner with that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Bro, <laughs> this is crazy, man. Hey, man, we missed that. Bro, that's wild. Hey, what's going on, family? God bless you all. Make sure if you liked this video, click that like button. Also, go comment down below what you liked about the video. Click the bell icon for more notifications and go share this video to all your friends and family. Also, there are many accounts impersonating me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. I will never ask you for money through WhatsApp. So if you get someone impersonating me with a fake account, make sure to block it and report
support it. Also, if you'd like to partner with us, click the description down below on the video and you'll see all the ways to partner. We appreciate all those who help us expand this vision to the nations, partnering with us in prayer and financially. We thank you so much. And also those who partner with us, liking the video, commenting down below, clicking that bell notification and sharing it to all your friends and family. We thank you. The gospel is being spread throughout the nations. People are getting saved, delivered, and healed. The Lord Jesus Christ is being glorified. Thank you for all our partners. In Jesus' name.